Happy Wednesday, Stampin' Friends. I'm glad you're here. Welcome to Stampin' Peace with Mary Nabe. Um, I've got a great project for you uh, this evening that I think you're really going to like and uses one of our, two of our new products um, and something a little bit different than a card tonight. But I want to give a shout out or a reminder, big shout out for our new annual catalog um, filled with great things. If you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you are in need of a catalog, please contact me. I would be happy to send you a complimentary catalog and earn your business. Um, if you are a customer of mine and you have not received one at this point, please let me know so um, I can check on that and possibly get another one out to you. <clears throat> um, I do have one class to go happening right now, and that is with the Wild and Sweet stamp set. Wild and Sweet. And with option one, you will get the... Um, wild and sweet stamp set you'll also get a package of the lovely layers vellum which is really cool there are some there's 20 pages that actually have something on them and then 40 pages that are or 40 sheets i should say that are um just plain and they're already pre-cut five by three and three quarter inches. So they are great for layering in scrapbooks, great for layering on cards. I've made lots of cards with them already. Um, and it, I just love that I can pull that size out and then um, work that in as a layer on my card fronts. With the Wild and Sweet class to go, um, so that's option one, you get that, plus supplies to make eight black and white cards, or four black and white cards, a total of eight cards, and four would be black and white, and then two, or four, I don't know what's the matter with my numbers tonight, four would um, be cards made with some color on them, so a total of eight cards, um, so option one, stamp set, the Lovely Layers Vellum, supplies to make eight different cards, and of course, the PDF tutorial and shipping is included in the price, which is $48. If you already have the stamp set or you're a demonstrator and would like to put the um, Wild and Sweet stamp set on your own demonstrator order, option two is available. All the same things without the stamp set. And then finally, the third option is always a uh, PDF tutorial, which is sent by email. And that's $15. And I should note that Stampin' Up! has um, an in-color starter kit promotion happening right now. And um, I want to mention that, first of all, because all of my Mary Stampers team members have access to my class to go PDF tutorials for free. Um, and many of them are taking advantage of that um, those free tutorials. So that's a perk you get for joining my team in particular. The In Color Starter Kit promotion costs $99 plus tax. Everything ships free. You get to choose $125 of Stampin' Up! product, and then Stampin' Up! is adding in another $66 worth of product that... Um, features the in colors, the new in colors. Um, there's cardstock, ink pads, uh, grid sheets. Can't think of what the other, or maybe DSP is the fourth one, but four different products featuring the in colors. So grand total, you're getting $191 of product and you're paying only $99 plus tax and that all ships free. And shipping on that, I did the math, would be $21. So that's another savings on top of that. I would love you, love to have you join my Mary Stampers team. Um, we just have a, a fun time, great people, caring, sharing people, 
and we get some perks and gifts along the way as team members. All right, on Monday's Facebook Live, I showed this double Z fold card featuring the Songbird bundle. So that was my sample. And then I made one in the demonstration with all of you. So if you missed that, you can find it um, right here on Stampin' Peace with Mary Nabe. Click the button, uh, the word more, then click videos and you'll be able to find it. And by the end of the week, I will have it on my blog as well. Yesterday, I did a catalog walkthrough going through the entire new annual catalog, pointing out some new products, um, and also pointing out many of my favorites. So that's always a fun thing to do. If you missed that, it's also right here on Stamp in Peace with Mary Nabe. Hit the more, word more, then videos, and you'll find it right there. With that Facebook Live for the catalog walkthrough, I said I would be giving away a fern embossing folder today. And to get your name entered into that drawing, you needed to, um, once the live was finished, you needed to tag somebody you know that you think would like um, my page or and or would like to see that new catalog walkthrough. And I had several people, can you hear that? I had several people um, participate in that. So I'm gonna draw the winner for that right now. And the winner is Lori Hall. So Lori Hall has won the fern embossing folder. I don't know if she's on tonight or not, but she is a frequent viewer and she also um, really likes my classes to go. Um, she said that online and has told me that and um, has purchased many of them. So anyway, so she is the winner of that. And now I'm ready to flip my camera around so that we can get started on tonight's project. While I'm doing that, please do share this live video so others can uh, perhaps jump on and enjoy the creative process with us. So tonight's project, I'm going to be featuring this beautiful black and white paper from our new annual catalog. It's called Perfectly Penciled, Perfectly Penciled. So you can see on each of the six sheets on the one side, there's flowers and leaves, large and small. And then if you flip it over, we just have some other fun black and white prints and patterns to use. So um, just a great versatile set of DSP. You can use it as is, just black and white. You can add a little bit of color. You can color everything on there if you want. You can blend in some background. Um, you might even use your um, blender pens to color some of the stripes or some of the polka dots or flowers. You can use blender pens. You can use whatever your heart desires to customize this paper if you wish. I'm a big fan of black and white with a pop of color. So that's what I'll be doing tonight. In addition to that DSP, I'm also using a couple of uh, stamps from the Happiness of Bounds bundle. And this is part of the Hues, Hues of Happiness suite in the new catalog, which people are really, really liking for all its colors. So what I'm going to be showing you today is basically a cash card. My niece is graduating from Ohio State, um, their nursing program this Sunday. So I'll be attending that. And um, I have decided she's she's got a job lined up and then she's going on to nurse practitioner school and she's getting her first apartment by herself ever. She's had lots of roommates in the dorm, um, apartments, whatever, but she's getting her first apartment by herself this time. So I thought, you know, I'm going to give her a little cash. Maybe she can buy something to use in her new apartment, but I wanted to make it 
something special, make a nice presentation of it. Um, and we've made lots of gift card holders in the past, but I think it's been a very long time since I've shown a cash card. So that's what we're going to do now. My cardstock that I'm starting with is eight and a half inches by seven inches. Okay, eight and a half by seven. So you can basically just cut off a four inch piece from your eight and a half by 11 cardstock or pull out the arm to cut that. So with this, then I'm going to um, have it in a horizontal position. So the long side is at the top and I'm gonna score at two inches. And five and a quarter. So I'm going to fold both ends in. This bottom smaller flap is going to be what makes the pocket to hold the cash. And then this is the top. And I'm going to do a belly band on here. So if you don't know what a belly band is, this is a great time for you to learn. I've cut two pieces of basic white cardstock that measure six and three quarters inches by, let me double check, three inches, I believe. Yes, three inches, okay? Six and three quarters by three inches. One is for the front. And then one is for the inside. You don't necessarily have to put something on the inside. If you're maybe putting a tag on the front, you know, to Allison from Aunt Mary, something like that. But I wanna be able to write at least a small message and there's not gonna be a lot of room, but nonetheless, I still wanna be able to write a personal note in there. So before I seal up the pocket, I'm adding this piece of basic white cardstock. I'm not quite ready to punch this yet, and I'll show you why. I have a six and three quarters by one and three quarter inch piece of white that's going to go here as a layer. And then I've cut a piece of DSP just a wee bit smaller than that which, so that would be, let's see, six and five eighths by one and three eighths. Is that right, one and three fourths? No, six and five eighths by one and five eighths inch. But before I do that, I do wanna cut out a notch here, and I'm gonna use a punch to do that. And I've decided, you can use no, I don't want that one. Um, you can use circle punches. You can use basically whatever you want. Um, you could even so use something like the ice cream cone because our circle punches have been retired. That's why I haven't, didn't use that. But I also wanted to show you, you could use lots of different punches. This would be a little bit hard because you're limited to how far you can put it in, but it still would work. One that I like to use for this is this punch. Well, and I, I probably use this one just as often too, the fancy label punch. And then you can use a small part of this as well. And this is the, no, this is label me fancy. I always say that wrong. And this is label me lovely. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm just going to, eyeball it. I want to put this right in the middle, but if you want to measure it out, feel free to do that. Then I'm going to take that white and I'm going to put it right where I want it. Well, I shouldn't, I, I'm going to line up the edges. That's where I want it now. I'm not going to adhere it. It's going to be adhered differently but I wanna make sure that I punch through this layer and I get it punched so it lines up with 
the base of my cash card. I want all of the layers here to line up. And if you don't want to do a cutout, you don't have to. It certainly is an easy way to still, um, you can still make a pocket without using a little punch out. And trust me, any college kid is gonna be able to pull that cash out. <laughs> uh, they don't necessarily need a little, little finger hole to help them. So you, if you feel like you want to leave that part out, you can. I think of it as sort of a, a decorative part, more than I do a necessary part. And again, you can use uh, circle punches, um, oval punch, either of these choices are limitless, or just limited to what you have, I should say. Now I'm going to adhere these two together and then I'm going to put them right here on this inside flap that I'm going to use to make the pocket. When you adhere these, I want you to be cautious that, um, because if you don't have this exactly centered and you start putting adhesive on the wrong side, no, it looks pretty well centered, but if you were off a little bit, then that would show up if you have your pieces backwards, okay? Um, Jenny, the reason I don't adhere first and then punch is that the punches are made to punch one layer of cardstock. Punching two layers or two layers plus DSP is too much for the punch, and it would be very hard to punch physically, plus it could damage your punch also. So that's why I do one layer at a time. You could even do um, use like a temporary adhesive, if that helps you, or just put a teeny tiny bit of adhesive to hold it in place. And then you could pull that off, pull off the piece of cardstock or DSP and position it once you've punched. Good question. And you'll really find that true of all punches. Um, sometimes you might be able to, depending on the punch, if it's not, um, doesn't have too many cuts or too many small cuts it needs to make when it's punching, sometimes you could um, do two p layers of cart of two layers of DSP, but I would never ever suggest that you do two layers of cardstock at once with your punches. All right, so now that I have that in place, I just find it easier to work with to keep everything lined up to put my DSP on that flap before I fold, but it's not crucial. It also helps me to remember to do um, the punches if I want them. So I'm just holding those ends down. You noticed that I put just a very narrow line of glue on. Okay. And that's because I want, um, don't want to make the pocket any smaller than it needs to be. Now, I just happen to have, because I wanted to make sure it fit with my measurements and it does nicely, okay? And then you can see, I can write, you know, congratulations, Allison, love Aunt Mary right here. And she'll pull it out and it'll be written nicely there and it'll be a little extra surprise when she pulls out her cash. So now I'm going to decorate the front. Now, as I said, you can use the plain black and white papers from the perfectly penciled DSP pack and add just a punch of color, which is what I'm going to do with this one. Or you can do something like this. Here's the very same thing. Okay, actually, this is the one I'm going to give her because Ohio State, scarlet and gray, right? So I'm 
colored in the flowers. It's the exact same paper. I colored in the flowers with my Stampin' Blends. Um, and this is the Real Red Stampin' Blends. So now I want to cut a strip of DSP that I'm going to use for the belly band. This is three and a quarter inches wide times two, so we know that is at least seven inches. So my suggestion to you is don't make your overlap too tiny. It's actually easier if you make it maybe an inch longer, inch and a half, something like that. And I'm not sure what I want to use here. Um, actually, I think I'll use this one. And I'm going to cut a one inch strip. So right now this is a one by 12, which I know is going to be too long. So I'm going to make this, I'm gonna cut off three and a half inch. No, I'm gonna, let's see. If I cut off three, I'll have nine inches. I'm gonna cut off three and a half. So that'll give me a good overlap of the ends without it being too much. Now, here's a secret. I always like to um, hide my seams. And what I mean by that is when I overlap these, there's going to be a little seam. Most people don't even notice that. Um, hold on one second. Most people don't even notice that. But... I think you can just make your project a little more um, professional looking. It's just a little bit nicer um, handicraft. And I know I've already stamped my flower and leaves and a sentiment. And I know that I'm going to put this on the front on top of the belly band. So I figured for this purpose, because I'll be putting something on the front of the belly band, I'm actually going to... I'm actually going to have the ends over, overlap on the front side. And that's my reasoning. Because I, I know that will be covered up. And sort of like, um, think of it as uh, it will look seamless. We'll put it that way. Okay, I'm going to try to match up the sides as best I can. And now I'm going to do, I've already stamped my flower and my leaves, and I'm going to color those. But before I do that, I'm going to stamp my sentiment. And this is congratulations. Now I'm using the, the one I made earlier for graduation, but I'm sure you can think of other reasons to use a cash card, perhaps to the wedding couple. Um, could be for a birthday, uh, maybe a retirement gift. I'm sure there are all kinds of reasons. And I'm sure that no matter your reason for sending a cash card, that you will we will have some kind of sentiment for you, okay? Yes, it's very easy to line things up when we have those photopolymers. Okay, so now I'm ready to color the flowers and leaves. I prefer to start with the dark shade of my Stampin' Blend. And again, I'm using Real Red. So I'm starting with Real Red Dark. And then I like to go in and fill in with the light shade. And that is not the only way to do it. I know people who prefer the opposite. They want to start with the light and then add the darker as they go along. These blending um, blender pens Stampin' Blends, I'm calling them the wrong name. Um, these Stampin' Blends 
are really, I think, quite forgiving because you can always go back and add more if either shade. So now I'm just gonna fill in with real red light. And the idea behind these Stampin' Up! blends is that when you blend both shades or even if you use multiple colors, that one color or one shade flows right into the next. So again, we kind of want a seamless look. We don't want a lot of um, heavy, obvious lines. Stampin' Blends are my favorite coloring tool, I will say that. I own them in every color and I use them lots and lots. My second favorite coloring tool, I think, would be the watercolor pencils. So now you can see in there, there's some different shades. If I wanna make some of those areas even darker than they already are, I can still do that by adding more of the dark shade. So that just made some of those areas a wee bit darker. I'm kind of where, where you'd see the shadows of them overlapping. Now here's another trick with Stampin' Blends. I don't often show you this, but this is a good opportunity to show you. We have what is called a color lifter, designs especially to use with Stampin' Blends. And the purpose of this is to lighten shades. So say, for example, maybe I got this a little darker than I really wanted it, and I want to lighten it up. I can do that with my color lifter. Do you see how it's getting a little lighter there? And you can use either end. So again, I don't use this often, but I love having it so that if I do want to go back in and lighten just a few areas, like on some of these petals, it happens. And you just do as much or as little as you want. just giving you even more dimension than you've already created by using those Stampin' Blends. And do you see the difference that has made? But again, I don't use the color lifter as often as I do the regular Stampin' Blends, but I do like to have it because occasionally maybe something, um, maybe even the lightest shade isn't as light as I want it to be for whatever my purpose is. So I wanna mention that. And then I'm going to use, this is Granny Apple Green. Now this doesn't have any lines in. You can see before I used my dark shade just by going over the lines that were already there. This doesn't have any of those lines, but I'm gonna kind of color these so it looks like the light is coming at them from one direction. And then you can see how I start and there's a, I can see the line between the two shades. Just go back in a little more and that softens that. Okay, do you see how that is? Really nicely blended you see different shades of the same color there. So now I'm ready to die cut these. Um, somebody asked a question here. Oh, does it bleed through? Okay, I was working right here on my surface. You can see I have no ink there, but it does bleed through to the cardstock. 
So if you have a white card base, you would not want to um, stamp and color with the Stampin' Blends directly onto the card base because when they would open the card, they would see it. So um, you always, no matter what you're coloring with Stampin' Blends, you always want to make sure it's going to be sitting on something else. Okay. Another good question. Yes, it bleeds through the paper, but not onto your work surface or, you know, if you would have happen to have a paper behind it or something. I'm going to use a couple of the dies from the Happiness Abounds bundle. I've used a number of these, but I still haven't used these um, straight ones and this real decorative one. Maybe next week I'll do that. So you're just going to match this up. Of course, we have a flat side which goes up. The ridge side, it's not sharp, but that is the cutting side. The ridge is what cuts. And just gonna match that up. If you want to, you can always add a little bit of washi tape to hold your dies in place. Make sure they don't move when you put the next cutting plate on top. Another thing you can do is use some post-it notes and hold them like that, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm gonna set this one. I'm gonna use the same post-it note to hold both in place. So I'm gonna do that and then, oops, didn't quite leave enough room to catch the other one. Again, washi tape is awesome. Um, the washi tape is stickier than the post-it notes, probably because these are cheap post-it notes I use. <laughs> um, but if you have something that's stickier, only put it on <clears throat> the edge, the outside edge of the die and beyond. Does that make sense? Because if you pull with washi tape, um, it, uh, there is a chance, depending on the quality of the washi tape, there is a chance that you can rip the image. So I would suggest with washi tape, you always put it around the outside of the die instead of going across the stamped image. I'm just going to fold this. And you know that when uh, most often I want to hold my dies in place that I do use the washi tape. But I wanted to show you tonight another way to take care of that problem, to solve that problem of dies bouncing around possibly. Also, I always think it's easier to color before you die cut and punch. The reason being you have more to hold on to rather than holding on to the part you're coloring, okay? So that's another quick quick tip. Color first, then punch or die cut. So now I'm ready to finish this off on my belly band. I'm going to put my flower right there, I think. And I'll probably add my leaf over here. I guess it could go the other way. Now, the purpose of the belly band is to hold this all closed, okay? So when you put that belly band around, you want it to be snug, but it should be able to slide freely. The other thing is if you, whatever you're adding to the top of your belly band, make sure the adhesive stays on the belly band only. So typically I put the adhesive on what I'm pressing down. So to do that, I just need to think about where I'm putting this and where I need my adhesive to go. And I'm going to use dimensionals for this because what's a card without dimensionals, right? You knew that, you knew I was gonna pull out dimensionals, right? How many of you knew that, expected me <laughs> to, <laughs> to pull out dimensionals at this point? 
There aren't too many secrets with me. Not too many secrets in the Stampin' Peace studio. I share all with you. Okay, I'm going to put it there. Pretty much right in the middle, I guess, or nearly in the middle. And I think I want my leaf right here. Now again, I only want to adhere this to the belly band. Otherwise, that belly band is not going to be able to slide freely. So this time, I'm actually going to put this on with a glue dot. And I'm putting the glue dot right on that tip so that that's all that will be adhered. I want to make sure that's where I want it. Yeah, that is. So press it down. And now I can check myself. All the adhesive is in the correct place, so it's not going to interfere with that sliding. And the last thing I need to do is add my sentiment. And I am going to cut off just a little bit of this end. I want to leave enough that I can adhere it to the belly band. Now, if it's too long, for your card if you don't want it hanging off. I'm going to actually be handing Allison's to her. So I don't care if it's hanging off a little bit, but if you're mailing it, and this will fit like in a business or letter envelope, or you can make your own envelope from DSP. If you Google that or look that up on Pinterest, it's real easy to find. But again, I wanna make sure this is only adhered to my belly band. Maybe I should have put this down first, actually, the more I look at it. So I'm just gonna put a couple of glue dots in those corners that I know will sit on the belly band. I kind of like that at an angle. I don't want to cover up that C too much. And I can press that flower back into place. So now I have that. And really, it looks just as beautiful if you have this off-centered with a tag coming out. If you don't have a tag at all, you can put it in the middle. Or if you're just handing it to the recipient, it's okay too that it hangs off. So, you know, just think about that when you're making it and putting it together. Now, do any of you have an occasion to send a cash gift or to give a cash gift? Type in the comments maybe reasons why you would send. My first thought was weddings. Um, usually I do a um, cash for the couple getting married. Now let me also show you, for anybody that came on late, let me also show you what it looks like if I colored in all of the flowers on front. Your granddaughter's graduation, yes. Okay. End of the volleyball season, sure, to coaches and things. It's teacher appreciation week. Maybe you wanna treat them to a coffee, stick in a little cash. Birthdays, anniversaries, weddings. You're right. You are so right, Tony. The list goes on and on. Yes, same thing, Barbara. At Christmas, I make loads of gift cards. Uh, gift card holders, I should say. But here's, here's the very same thing, but I colored in the background. And I think both are beautiful. And I'm going to be giving this one away. I'm sorry, but I have to take the $100 out. <laughs> now, if I could do that for all of you, I would. You know I would. With a hand-stamped cash card, right? Handmade cash card. Wouldn't that be the dream? Oh, and trust me, if I ever win the Super Lotto or anything like that, I will share. My family knows that. Okay, I'm ready to give this um, cash card holder away. So if you would like to 
win this, please comment. Oops, what was it called? It was called Perfectly Penciled. There it is. Put Perfectly Penciled DSP. Okay, now a funny thing is happening. People started coming on and, and there's a number I can see on my screen that tells me how many people are watching. And the number went up to, I don't know, 10 or 12 at the very beginning. And I kept seeing people get on and all at once I looked up and there were, it only says two. And I thought, oh my gosh, did all those people leave? So I'm so glad to see you commenting to know that you didn't all leave. Facebook can do weird things to me at times. I just was looking to see if I missed any questions. I don't think so. But I do have a special announcement. Lori Hall jumped on late. She's on most of my lives. Um, but Lori Hall, you missed me choosing, um, drawing the name for the winner of the Fern Embossing Folder. And Lori, you are it. So I will be putting this in the mail to you this week. Are there any questions about this? I think this time of year with graduations and weddings and all kinds of things happening year end, school year end, um, the need for gift card holders and cash card holders can be great. So um, I hope you will take some time and make one of these. It really is very, very easy, okay? Really is very, very easy. And I have a different kind of cash card to show you. I'm not sure if it's gonna be Friday or Monday because um, I also have a fun fold that I had planned for this Friday. So I'm trying to decide, I might switch those around. But I have a different kind of cash card holder to show you. Uh, same size, but totally different, totally different. And that one's going to amaze you. Also very simple to make. All right, everybody, I'm going to say good night. Um, if you have any questions regarding Stampin' Up! needs, products, um, the catalogs, please let me know. If you need the information for the, the uh, Wild and Sweet class to go, Please let me know that as well, or you can find it on my blog, stampinpeace.com. Alrighty. Have a good night, everybody. Oh, I have other good news, personal good news. Um, Emily texted, you know, she graduated from the University of Cincinnati on Friday, and she got her doctorate in physical therapy. We're so proud of her. And it was fun for the whole family to be together and celebrate Emily. Um, but today she texted all of us that she passed her boards. She took her board exam two days before graduation and um, she passed and it's all good. So another bit of excitement for Emily. All right, everybody, have a good night. And I look forward to seeing you for another creative project on Friday, right here on Stampin' Peace with Mary Nabe at 2 p.m. Eastern time. All right, everybody. Bye-bye.